Welcome to the Apple Daily News. This podcast is created by Generative AI. Today is July 6, 2024. Links to all stories can be found in the episode notes. First up, Epic Games has accused Apple of creating roadblocks in launching its game store in Europe. Apple rejected Epic's notarization submission twice, citing similarities between Epic's buttons and Apple's labels. Epic believes Apple's rejection is arbitrary and obstructive, violating the Digital Markets Act. Despite this, Epic is prepared to launch its store and Fortnite on iOS in the EU soon. This dispute is part of the ongoing battle between Apple and Epic over issues like the 30% cut in in-app purchases. The European Commission is involved, investigating Apple, Google, and Meta for non-compliance with DMA policies. Apple is the first company to face charges under the DMA. This conflict highlights the challenges major companies face in dealing with new regulations. In related news, Apple has approved the Epic Games Store for iPhone and iPad in the European Union. This decision allows Epic Games to launch its alternative app marketplace in EU countries. Initially, Apple had rejected the store twice, citing similarities in design elements with the App Store. Epic Games argued that the rejection was arbitrary and in violation of the Digital Markets Act. The approval comes after a long-standing battle between Epic Games and Apple over the closed App Store ecosystem. Epic Games has been eager to launch its marketplace in the EU under Apple's new policies driven by the Digital Markets Act. Moving on, Apple has reportedly removed at least two VPN apps from the Russian App Store after demands from the Kremlin's internet regulatory agency, Roskomnadzor. The VPNs, Red Shield VPN and Lee VPN, received emails from Apple stating that their apps did not comply with local laws. This move by Apple has been criticized by the VPN operators, who claim that Apple is supporting an authoritarian regime by effectively banning VPNs in Russia. Roskomnadzor has been pressuring tech companies to remove VPN apps, with Google also receiving similar requests. Russian internet freedom NGO Roskom Svoboda reported that eight VPN apps, including popular ones like NordVPN and Proton, are no longer available on the Russian App Store. The focus now seems to be on preventing VPN apps from being distributed rather than just blocking VPN servers. Apple has not confirmed sending the notifications, but a Russian news agency reported that 25 VPN services' mobile apps have been removed from the Russian App Store. In another related story, Apple has complied with demands from Russian authorities to remove several top iPhone VPN apps from the App Store in Russia. The demand came from Roskom Nadzor, the state media watchdog, citing that the apps contained illegal content in Russia. This move follows the regulators' increased blocking of VPN services in the country. Reportedly, as many as 25 VPN firms have had their apps removed. VPN usage in Russia surged after the war with Ukraine began, as Russian authorities blocked access to Western social media sites. VPNs encrypt user data for security and help disguise a user's location, allowing them to bypass local or countrywide restrictions on websites. Some users have criticized Apple for complying with the demands, suggesting that the company should stop selling products in Russia altogether. Switching gears, Google considered blocking Safari users from accessing its new AI features, as reported by 9to5Mac. The move was part of Google's efforts to reduce its reliance on Apple's Safari browser, a key component in an ongoing Justice Department investigation. Google pays Apple over $20 billion annually to be the default search engine on iPhones, which the Justice Department believes hinders competition. Google has been trying to persuade iPhone users to switch to Google or Chrome apps for searches, but progress has been slow. The revenue sharing agreement between Google and Apple involves a cut of advertising revenue from Google searches in Safari. Google hired a former Instagram executive to oversee the shift away from Safari, but convincing users to switch has been challenging. Google executives considered limiting its AI overviews feature to its own apps, but ultimately decided against it. The Justice Department's antitrust ruling is expected in the coming months. In other news, Figma has disabled its AI design feature called Make Design after accusations that it was replicating Apple's weather app design. The issue was first raised by Andy Allen, who found that Figma's tool was reproducing Apple's weather app design. Figma CEO Dylan Field denied the accusation of heavily training the tool on existing apps. 
The Make Design feature was meant to generate UI layouts and components from text prompts to aid developers in quickly exploring design directions. However, in the rush to launch new AI features, quality assurance may have been overlooked. Some designers expressed concerns that Figma's AI tools could potentially replace jobs in the design industry. Field acknowledged the issue and announced the temporary disabling of the Make Design feature until a full QA pass is completed. Apple has not commented on the matter. Next, the article discusses Microsoft's success in making Windows on ARM a viable platform with the help of Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus chips. The author tested seven Copilot Plus PCs with Snapdragon X chips against laptops running Apple Silicon, Intel Core Ultra, and AMD Ryzen processors. The Snapdragon X Elite chips showed competitive single-core and multi-core performance compared to Apple's M3 chip, Intel and AMD processors. However, Snapdragon chips fell behind in GPU performance, especially for gaming and heavy graphical workloads. The article also covers power efficiency, emulation capabilities, battery life, and the future outlook for Qualcomm in the laptop market. Overall, the Snapdragon Copilot Plus PCs offer good performance and battery life at competitive prices, challenging Intel and AMD in the laptop market. Lastly, Aspect is a new AI social app where users interact solely with artificial intelligence instead of other human users. Users can share posts, photos, and thoughts with AI, see AI-generated content in their feed, chat one-on-one -on -one with AI through DMs, explore diverse AI personalities, and build unique relationships with AI. The app's privacy policy includes collecting data such as contact info, user content, and identifiers, but some data like diagnostics is not linked to the user's identity. The app is developed by Arch Platforms Inc. and is available for free with an in-app purchase option for Aspect Pro at $9.99. The app is rated 17 plus for infrequent, mild, mature, suggestive themes and profanity or crude humor. It is compatible with iPhone, iPod Touch, Mac, and Apple Vision devices. Finally, mapping apps like Google Maps and Apple Maps sometimes provide unnecessary or confusing instructions to users due to the way they interpret data. The maps represent roads as a series of segments, leading to instructions at transition points that users may find unnecessary. The precision of these maps, with detailed information on buildings, lanes, and signals, can lead to map splaining where users receive overly detailed guidance. Both Apple and Google constantly update their maps with millions of edits daily, affecting the quality of instructions. The apps also show points of interest based on popularity and user behavior, sometimes leading to biased results. While mapping apps improve navigation confidence, they may also hinder users' ability to self-orient. The companies are exploring new features like augmented reality street views to address these issues. Despite occasional quirks, mapping apps remain highly useful and widely accepted by users. That's all for today's episode of the Apple Daily News. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check the episode notes for links to all the stories we've covered. Join us again tomorrow for more updates on everything Apple. Have a great day.